our story began, um, I guess about almost two years ago when really Baker was at 16 months or so. Baker's speech has been a journey um, I'll never forget. I guess it kind of initially started in the pediatrician's office and I'll just never forget him telling me that, you know, there's a lot of kids with autism that never speak. And I don't know what it was about that, but it just devastated me. Like the idea of never hearing his voice. So, I mean, after hearing that, I mean, I was probably more just apt to just say, trust the doctor and just say, yeah, like, this is normal. And that's, that's what they tell you. That's what they want you to, you know, to believe. And, you know, just like she had said, I, I just think the mother's instinct was there the entire time it started happening. And I just wanted to just put up these blinders and just say, like, no, this isn't what's happening. Um, like, he's just, you know, a little bit behind and he'll get there. He was overall what we thought like a healthy, typically developing baby, um, reaching all of his milestones. He was happy, he was content. Um, it was perfect. And he did have fairly recurrent ear infections um, and some gut issues, but aside from that, I mean, like I said, hitting all of his milestones and everything. And then Kind of starting at 12 months, and the few months after that, he slowly started changing. Um, I guess I would describe it best like his light kind of just started going out. Um, he was withdrawing from us, and he just went from being completely happy to he just was crying all the time, screaming, covering his ears. He was head banging um, against his crib, against the floor kind of out of nowhere and for no reason. Um, we never experienced this with our older boys. Within a matter of a couple months, um, he just became a totally different child. And like you said, he, I think the overall thing was he just was so unhappy and he was just in his own world. He wanted to play under the table. Um, he kind of had a repetitive thing with the, all the doors had to be closed all the time and his eye contact kind of completely went away. He rarely would look at you in the eye. Um, he lost any responsiveness to his name that he had had. When he was around 12 months, he had started saying Dada, he'd started clapping and waving, and kind of as quickly as that came, it all went away. And I remember going to our like well visit appointments and they kind of just brushed it off like, oh, this is normal, it can happen. There was never any kind of cause for concern or worry. Let's just wait and see, let's just wait and see. And I'm like, well, I live with him, and I can tell you that he's not the same child that I had. Me. Peace? Me. Peace. 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 You stand with me for a minute. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Puppy. Puppy. I had had somebody close to me mention vaccines and have you looked into this? I googled it, not knowing what I know now. I googled it because I thought that's what you do, not realizing the censorship that was on there and the lack of like really true information. Um, the ingredients for what's really in vaccines, the amounts of the ingredients, um, the heavy metals, the aborted fetal cells. I just was so unaware of any of those things um, and all the neurotoxins that are in them. And one thing led to another and I just remember going to his 18 month well visit and he still wasn't talking and Hello. the Hello. pediatrician Hi. was saying Yay. Hi. he very likely to have Hello. autism. Hi. 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 Yeah, so I guess ultimately what led me really to really dive into this and really dig in and really do the work and research it was something about a mom's intuition and I just knew what was going on with him didn't come out of nowhere. To be told that that's normal or even that that's just autism wasn't acceptable to me. Um, 
him living a miserable life was not acceptable and no part of it was normal either. Baker and I rock every night, either he and I or he and dad, and I know whenever I rock them we listen to music and then before I lay him down, this was a couple months ago, and every night before I would lay him down we would say a little prayer and then I would take his hand and I would say, Mama? Mama? And then I would put it to his and I would say, Baker, you are Baker, I am Mama. And it was on a Monday night and we were rocking and I did that and I said, Mama? And he said, Mama? And it was just like, oh my God, like there you are. Like you've been here all along and you hear me. He's kind of had an explosion over the last couple months of just talking. Hi, buddy. <laughs> and and learning and he's to the point now where he's almost trying to say almost something new or attempting it every day or every other day. What's your name? Baker. Baker. Who am I? Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> so this has been a journey for us um, waking up to all of this but if I've learned one thing it's that you have to advocate like a mother. Um, for your child and thank God he has blessed us and blessed Baker and helped um, start to heal him and we still have a big journey ahead of us but I hope that if it does nothing else that it might help wake somebody up. <laughs>